which is really entertaining. Uh, actually, former best in the city, Sinji did take that title from him on the most recent PR, but we saw Jen already defeat Sinji to get here, right? Uh, or no, did he lost to him in winners? No, he beat him. No, he, he, beat him. he yeah, schooled was, him. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, no, I, I definitely saw that. I wasn't commentating, of course, so can't remember the results. No way. Nonetheless, we're not even seeing Apollo Tony. We're seeing Jen lead off with his Fox, off against Olimar, and an another odd matchup, I would say. Not particularly uncommon characters, but seeing them fight off against at this high of a level, also going to be very entertaining. And now Jen really starting to flex a lot of his skills, showcasing that regardless of the type of character or the tools at his disposal, he is ready and willing to fight off against world-class talent. This is pretty one-sided so far, though. Of course, Jen busting out the secondary Fox, which we should, you know, highlight. This is a still good character for him, but he's made not so far yet. Primarily, his money with Palutena. I can't blame him though, because the Buzz, of course, plays Palutena himself. He's really gonna know how to pick the character apart, and the speed that Fox has is a good way to overwhelm a zoning-based character like this. And like we established in the pregame, we're really not seeing Ken at any point here. So to see Fox lead the pack. Unsurprising, but I'm curious to see where Jen finds a lot of his openings because this, of course, being the new Olimar that we're still getting acclimated to see at this high of a level, especially this fast pace of a matchup considering the players at hand, it's going to be a lot of the buzz with punishing, figuring out ways to bait in Jen, find some sort of poor approach, and then blow him up on it. It worked yeah. really well in the first stock, but starting to slow things down now. I think Jen's starting to see where he needs to at least choose his approaches better. Yeah, DeBuzz just looking for the overextensions, and it's so hard not to do that against Olimar, especially when you're a stock down. You know you need to be causing some action. Oh, sloppy recovery there from Jen. Just going to get his head clipped on the illusion by Olimar's head on the down tilt. You know, considering the size of... <laughs> Beautiful punch. Considering the size of Olimar, finding that one hit to... Get your opening for up smash. Gonna be fairly difficult. Seeing a lot of sharking around with dash attack and there. Fairly typical of Fox, but especially more necessary where you're not gonna really be able to get those falling up airs. You can't really shark around with up tilt. Like getting that one little hit is gonna be kind of annoying for Jen. Oh, the buzz. So dangerous with his opponent off the stage here. Oh, wow, looking for the spike. Instead, gonna get the outer hitbox down air. He's still in firm control. Nothing for him to be sweating, missing that edge guard at all. Great patience showcased by the buzz. You see him not even pressing the button at the ledge, just waiting for Jen to put something in. And like, it's a bit concerning because you know that Fox has a linear recovery. He's one of those characters who like, yes, he's very swift, but if you see where he's gonna go, you put something or yourself right in position. And there's no better character in the cast than Olimar than to just put something in harm's way while you run away. Oh, intense moments here. Jen down to his last breath in this first game. The buzz just looking for any good hit to seal it out. Grab from this blue Pikmin certainly would do it. Any smash attack from any non-white Pikmin as well. Looking for the opportunity. Jen also looking for these parries, one of his strongest assets as a player. But doesn't matter, out of shield game from the buzz. Yeah. Ridiculously strong. Ugh. Even the buzz went at the end of that one. That was a, a weird one, but nonetheless, he is gonna be taking that game two. Game one, rather. Game, game one, bad. yeah. My bad. Dude, I do that all the time. No judgment whatsoever. It's been a long day. Of course, you've been helping with production, helping TO. You've been doing everything. I just showed up, <laughs> MC'd, and hopped on the mic, and I still can't remember what's going on. It's been a busy day for all of us, man. It has. He's not helping any matters. Everyone yeah. losing their heads over the action isn't serving anyone any good. Yeah, so I think that water I spilled on myself is dried up, and now it is just sweat all over my, <laughs> my shirt, so. You know what it is? It's been a scorcher. Dude, I just came back from Florida. I thought I was escaping the heat. Oh, no, you brought it with you. Yep. Sorry, guys. Well, hopefully Sam Sora can take it back with him. Stop <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> Olimar, we got a bit of hesitation on the character select. See where we're hovering over. Fox back at it again for game two. All right, moving into the second game, we're gonna see Jen actually double down on Fox here. Not sure if I like this call. I think, you know, he has very little to lose by at least trying his best character in Palutena. Not like that's a bad matchup against Olimar by any means. I think it's just really the matter that, as you brought up earlier, DeBuzz has played Palutena extensively. He has a very good understanding of the character's strengths, the character's weaknesses, and more importantly, how he can exploit that with the rest of his ensemble of characters. And Jen doesn't get an opportunity to fight talented Olimar's 
like that. So he doesn't want to come unprepared into a battle, especially with how much is on the line here in loser semifinals. This is tournament life on the line. Yeah, considering how good Almar is, he is still a really rare character. I think a lot of people just don't want to commit to playing his owner. It's very mentally draining. And it's hard to be a crowd favorite when you play characters like this. But you know what, man? If it's getting you the Ws, then who cares about the crowd? I think the Buzz is probably the poster boy for that kind of mentality. And it pays off for him. Already working his way to top four. Trying to slay his compatriot, Jen, to advance even further. Wow, barely hanging on. Jen refuses to die off of this stock. Third oh. time, not even serving to be the charm. Jen's still trying to come back. <laughs> it's just proving effortless for the Buzz right now. Just shows how much your Pikmin order matters. Wow, and he texts, but that one untackable finally. The game had to tell him to stop. Yeah, going to rebound off the edge into the left glass zone, and that's going to be the first stock owner to Buzz quite handily, too. Jen right. just looking like he can't get a big opening. To right a few seconds ago, we just saw an instance that I feel is pivotal to this matchup. The falling there on the shield, followed by an up tilt that hit nothing. Omar's positioning is super key in this matchup, and DeBuzz has been doing a great job to hide in those, those dark spots, those areas where there's no hitbox, so he can just be right up in Jen's face, punish hard. And Jen has not found a way to really break through with any reliable hitboxes. Dash attack only able to do so much, especially with DeBuzz being on point with getting the armor frames from his whistle. Catching that roll back, the Buzz keeps the edge guard going. Still holding advantage here. All right, clutch air dodge to the edge, gonna be what gets him back, but the Buzz still all over the next option. Dash attack nares, all right. The little strings coming out from Fox, but he's gonna need more than these piecemeal hits. He's gonna need something big that ends in either a tech chase into an up smash or just some kind of setup into one of his kill moves. Like, control of the ledge has not been a favorable position for Jen. He hasn't really gone off deep. Can't really afford to do so. With Pikmin in hand, DeBuzz always has at least one option for being able to pry Fox out of that and just take the ledge back. And then once again, Jen doesn't want to be at the ledge. He keeps on getting juggled off. And even though he's doing a fantastic job of extending his stocks, it's just proving to further away the death that's looking him dead in the face. Especially with these purple Pikmin at the ready to serve DeBuzz. Yeah, this is quite a significant deficit. Hangman, I don't know exactly uh, how Jen's gonna pull himself out of this one, especially if he's getting dunked like that. No, but the tech hangs on, and he's chasing so deep. The Buzz just gonna take the high road back to the stage. Doesn't even have to worry about a ledge trap. And that's the price you pay when you go for these edge guards. You forfeit stage control, you forfeit your advantage state. I feel like the Buzz is He's willing and able to do that because he consistently is able to win these bouts for stage control. He's able to effortlessly take back the ledge. He's able to retreat to center stage so easily. And Jen still has not found any proper responses for being able to do the same. Now down two stocks to the buzz, not being able to finish off a stock chilling at 121. It's proving to be a very difficult task with this Fox. The buzz is showing why he's the gatekeeper of New York. You have to really be playing on something special to take a set from him. And Jen, I mean, he's done just that, making it here to loser semis and taking out Light and Sinji on the way. But still, no easy task to get through the buzz. You really need to bring some special sauce, especially if you're a player that he's seen and studied before. Once again, back at the ledge. See what's going to be happening. Just, it's not even the fact that Jen is almost dying with every one of these successful downers. It's the fact that he's taking so much damage that by the time he comes back to the stage, he is already bleeding. He's already waiting for the point where DeBuzz can just grab him, toss him away, or throw out a wayward attack. Yeah, DeBuzz has just made so much damage come off of these sloppy recoveries from Jen, whether it's not sweet spotting the side B vertically. Oh, Tech. No, okay, doesn't even need to. Outer hitbox, not strong enough to send him out. And Tech, no, just straight to hell. And that's going to be a 2-0 lead for DeBuzz in this set. Now is where we start to see the desperate option picks from players. And while Jen is known as a player who's willing to stick to his guns, regardless if it's stage or regardless if it's character, he is going to want to stay in the fight for this one. Moving over to Smashville for the next game, and he is going down with the Vulcan. It's Fox sticking around into game three. But as far as the stages go, there's much less space to traverse. And Fox is known for being able to control the stage fairly well with his aggressive options. It's going to be Smashville <laughs> and a big platform to hide under for Olimar. I feel like Jen possibly counterpicking himself just a little bit here. That said, Fox is extremely good at using his own up airs underneath this platform to keep the advantage state going for a long time. But I don't know, man. Olimar seems really threatening on stages like this. With Yoshi's Brawl out of the picture, this is, in my opinion, probably the best layout for him. 
but I'm far from an Olimar player, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Hit the Twitters, you already know. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not sure if I like his odds here. Jen doing a good job, though, keeping it close, certainly closer than before. I feel like the, the fact that a lot of this battle is going to take itself to the ledge so easily because of the size of the stage, it's going to be better for Jen for the sake that a lot of these bouts are going to just be heavy trades. It's not so much the buzz taking the trade of mispositioning on stage for getting all of this damage on Jen. He's going to be having to take a little bit of percentage if he wants to win out. Gorgeous parry, though, going to seal the deal on the first stock. And Jen with a lead for the first time here in this loser semifinals. He puts a game on the board here. This could be the start of a huge momentum swing in his favor. Looks like he's just figuring out DeBuzz progressively throughout the set. Meanwhile, DeBuzz already knows how to fight Fox, right? He's had a tangle with Light, and this character was a lot more popular, especially here in New York in Smash 4. Yeah, a lot of that just sticks around as muscle memory. A lot of the thought is the same as far as what you want to do to counter the character. But given the situation at hand, I feel like DeBuzz is going to have to mix up how he's been zoning out. Jen, he's been doing a great job so far in tying up the stocks relatively quickly great on him for being able to at least get a little bit more of that pressure down. But if DeBuzz doesn't mix up how he pressures with his Pikmin or utilizes his non-Pikmin-oriented aerials, I feel like Jen is going to get closer and closer to solving this mystery. The dash attack, but nothing off of it. Had a tech chase situation. Jen could have capitalized just a little bit harder, but DeBuzz always going to stay tricky on the defense, man. It's so hard to pin this guy down. Even if you think, all right, he's in a bad spot. He's going to have to pick some kind of predictable L or R button. Input, nah, man. He's been put in those spots so many times as such a veteran player that he always finds a way to finagle his way out of it. I was managing to extend every little last hit to make these stocks matter. Look at this. For every time that Jen has to get his combo, he has to retreat a little bit. He has to go for those raw hits. He has to go for those risky options to keep himself alive. Yeah, that forward smash from Jen, such a good option to cover the ledge. And now he's got another opening. All right, the juggles. Love Ooh. that, cutting right through the up smash with neutral air, and that's one of the biggest reasons to play Fox in this matchup. Nair just shuts the Pikmin down. Between Nair and Shine, I feel like Jen has finally found a reliable way to respond to the Pikmin, but it might be too little too late at this point in the game. The thing the tech sent back out again. Oh, and he died trying to Fox do a side B. It increased his momentum. Tragic no. end there for Jen. Ooh. A bit of a tragic ending, but nonetheless, that is a solid 3-0 for DeBuzz as he moves on to fight the definitive crowd favorite in Leon. And this is definitely their first meeting. We were talking about how we're not sure if Jen and DeBuzz have crossed paths yet in Ultimate, but this for sure is going to be the first tournament meeting between the best Bowser and the best Olimar in the world. I mean, on paper, really tough look for Leon, I would say. These donors shut the big bodies it's down. It's going to be a weird one because any character out of DeBuzz's arsenal is going to be able to fight Bowser effectively. Yes. And Leon, the only other character that he's ever been known to really take out is Game & Watch.